welcome to Modelling Misadventures. And in today's video, we're back on with the radio control boat. So we're gonna carry on working on this hull. Now I've got to the stage now where I, I need to seal this hull. And uh, the way the model's designed is for this wood just to be varnished, but uh, in my case, it's gonna be painted white to uh, make it look like the Chris Craft uh, boat. So I'm gonna to have to seal it. And um, I've been thinking of different options. Uh, option one is to spray it with car lacquer uh, for a few coats and then sand it down. Option two is to make some homemade sanding sealer with dope and talcum powder. And option three is to make that but dilute it with some thinner. Now I've done a bit of a test run and uh, on these three pieces of wood and uh, that is the lacquered version and it still leaves a lot of uh, grain visible. The two dope options here, the neat dope and the diluted dope are both pretty good and they've given it a very nice smooth finish. So I'm actually going to go with the dope sanding sealer, mix a bit of talcum powder in with it and thin it down with a bit of thinners, paint it on, sand it, uh, give it a couple of coats of that and hopefully I'll get a really nice smooth finish on the wood. So I've given this uh, a sanding in 360 grit sandpaper. It's actually feeling very smooth and uh, I think it's filled in the grain very nicely. But um, I'm going to just fill in some minor imperfections and gaps and then do another coat of sanding sealer and then give it another sanding. So I'm just going to fill any minor imperfections with this wood filler. Um, it'll just fill any gaps and then I'll seal the hull again. Okay, just filled in all those cracks. Well, I filled the cracks and sanded it off again. So here's my tried and tested dusting method. So the second coat of sanding sealer going on. I'm hoping this will give it a really smooth finish now after this. So I've got the hull all sanded and cleaned and now it's time to do a test fit of the motor and drive shaft and um, to glue the prop shaft in. So this is the setup. This is a fairly simple brush motor and I've filed a flat section on the spindle there. Here we've got the coupling and here we've got the prop shaft and the prop will screw onto the end. I'm just gonna put a drop of glue on here to make sure it's nice and tight. And then that goes in there. So the motor fits directly to the framework. So there's no need for motor mount. Slide the prop shaft in. Just going to temporarily screw the motor in with a couple of M3 screws. Now my prop coupling was catching there on the keel, so you see I've had to sand a little bit off uh, to give it some clearance. All right, that's set up about right. So uh, now we can glue it in down here. Now I'm gonna glue the prop shaft in with a two part epoxy, 15 minute cure. Okay, that should do. And that finishes the prop shaft insulation with that little fillet there 
just to give it a bit of extra strength. Right, next part, the rudder tube goes in here and there's a couple of strengthening pieces just to help hold that in. Now this tube needs to poke out three millimeters, the bottom of the hole. That's about right. And that's all glued in. Now the last thing we need to do to this hole before the superstructure starts is put these stringers down the side and they're labeled 31 and 32, but these are actually not numbered parts. So the only way of finding them is to go to the parts list here and see what their actual measurements are. And then you've got to measure them from the numerous strips that are provided. So I found them and uh, here they are, just uh, two by four millimeter strips and they go down the edge of the sides. Now these little gaps here were the notches from the original frames that the side of the boat's fitted into. And when you glued it, it left this little gap here. And that's what these are now going to fill. And they go in really nicely and uh, provide more structural integrity to the side walls. Right, now I need to seal the inside of this boat and that's gonna take three coats of clear varnish, which I've got here. Well, I've got my three coats of varnish done and uh, that should be now nice and waterproof, hopefully. So this is coming on really nicely. I think I'm going to leave it there for this video. In the next video, we've got to start thinking about how do we start to make this look more like a Chris Craft Corvette. But for now, it's still looking like an Aeronaut Victoria. And with that, I'll say thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Modelling Misadventures. Thank you.